Welcome to JBA University. This is our first interview with Keith from Allen and Heath. Hi. Or Keith with Allen and Heath. Let's go with the rhyming. <laughs> Keep it all, all there. Uh, he is the product manager for Zed, Q, SQ, and now this CQ. Let's say I've just taken this out of the box. Mm -hmm. How fast can I get audio through it? So uh, it's really fast to set up. There's a, there's a few assistants in there to help you as well. Okay. So um, looking at the, the screen keys at the bottom, mm -hmm. the first thing to go to is your config page, yep. which has a really nice view of uh, all the sockets at the top. Yeah. So connect up something, you'll have to just imagine. Select that input on the okay. screen. And now at the bottom of the screen, you can see all of the settings for that input. Okay, so kind of I can options. I can stereo link. I can change between analog mm -hmm. or USB slash SD card. I can name it. Yep. Uh, ooh, gain assistant, um, fan of power, input polarity, and gain. What, tell me about gain assistant. So gain assistant is a new feature for CQ that we developed, mm -hmm. and the the whole idea is to to get you set up super quick. So gain is something that's you know it's really important. But it's mm -hmm. not super exciting. No. And it's, it's you know, so, so it's like, the, that's not the bit I want to be playing with. I want to get that set up and done and get my gain staging perfect and then move on to the mixing as quickly as possible. So Gain Assistant has two options here. There's two buttons you can see on the screen. Mm -hmm. So the first is Auto Set. So tap that and it will start listening to the input. Mm -hmm. And, and I have a giant question mark because I have imaginary microphones plugged yeah. in. <laughs> and it will listen to that input. Yeah, it's not hearing anything. So it's, it's going, where's the input? <laughs> um, and it will set your gain for you. So it will bring up the gain until it's at the perfect level. And then it will just shut off and say, I'm happy, I'm good. So what what is perfect level? If I plug in a bunch of things, is it going to set them all to the same relative loudness, to the same RMS? Like... So it's it is looking at some uh, it's looking at peaking and averaging over time. Mm -hmm. The the perfect level is well how this sees the perfect level. Some people <laughs> you know DJs maybe might want to hit the red <laughs> all the time. Of course, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's not to say you can't adjust this after the fact, obviously. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, but the the perfect level really is sitting around zero dB. So that's going to be the best level for the converters to work at. Mm -hmm. So you're bringing up the mic level signal, the low level signal, up to a line level. Uh, and then you're converting it to, to digital, so it's digital mixer. So that auto set will get you to the right spot to start mm -hmm. with, and it'll also switch on auto gain, which is the second option, automatically. I see that. And that's there so that if you're peaking that input, if that input is too hot, it will bring the game back down again, so you're not distorting that signal. Okay, and that's something that you could just like leave on on all the inputs in the background yep. after the fact. Yep. And if you you know if you're like, hey, I don't, I don't want to use auto set. Mm -hmm. You can still use the auto gain, so you can still just switch that on and leave okay. it on. Okay, and this isn't like the automatic mic mixer. It's not compensating like with the fader on the other side. This is literally just no. the this gain. Is, yeah, this is setting it up, getting it in the right spot, getting your foundation correct. Okay, cool. So I got my input set up. If I go well, and do that across every channel, at least. So the cool thing about uh, about the gain assistant, you can do it on a channel by channel basis, mm -hmm. or there's a multi select button on the screen as well. Okay, so over here on the right side. So if you tap on that, then you can select multiple inputs. Yeah, so you can you can touch and drag to select loads, or this you can just so tap easy. on each of them. Oh, and I see on here now it has all off or all on. Yeah. Look at you guys. Yeah. And you can auto set for all of the ones that you've got selected at once. Um, so I can have the entire band sound check at once. Yeah. Just <laughs> you'd be like if you're setting up, you go okay, multi select, select all the inputs, hit auto set. And then shout the band like play, play the chorus, play the loudest bit. That's yeah. generally the way to do it. And, and doing all of that at once, um, you don't have any bleed issues because this isn't anything like an auto mixer. This is just like literally setting the gain. Yeah. So it's just setting the gain on the stuff that you've connected up. So now you're now you're cool because you're set up. You've got got everything coming in at a good level. Okay. Okay. So. That's all my inputs. That's your inputs. Your inputs done. I... Yeah, done. So you you can go straight from here now. I mean. I would say the next thing to do, if you haven't done it already, you might have a, a standard setup, but the next thing to do maybe is look at your outputs. Okay. So in the output section, again, you can just select the socket, the out socket, or the, or the main left right there, or the headphones, of course. Mm -hmm. And again, oh, yeah. you'll get the options down at the bottom. 
So here we've got similar options. So there's a, a library option if you want to recall a preset from there uh, or a channel type, which we'll get onto. Um, you, can, you can change uh, the EQ type here as well. Uh, input send levels can be pre or post fader and you've got an output delay there as well. So this is all your setup config. You know, you're, you're in this setup. Okay, and I do see you can stereo link adjacent channels. Yeah, so if you've got nice. like IEMs and you want to have stereo IEMs, you could link up a couple of these outputs mm -hmm. of a, a stereo. Output delay too. Yeah. That's, that's fancy for a mixer like this. I know that's like a stupid little feature for some people, but like if you're doing like a corporate AV gig with this, like yeah. that's really helpful. Really important for like fills, for set, you know, yeah. for, for, for extra fills, or even um, what we see a lot now, we have got a USB-B interface on here, mm -hmm. uh, is that people want to delay to sync to video okay. you know, for a streaming application. Um, so in EQ type over here, um, mm -hmm. I see PEQ and FBA and GEQ. I'm assuming PEQ is parametric EQ. Mm -hmm. What does FBA stand for? So that is the feedback system that we've got built in on every output. So the, the option there is either you're going to um, kind of go old school, I say. <laughs> Maybe I could say that. It's like you could, go, you could go old school and you could have a GEQ on every output. That's available. That's right there. Mm -hmm. uh, or if you want, you can switch that GEQ out and you can have a, a PEQ and feedback system. Uh, which is a very cool feature, which is also new for CQ, Ooh. which I'll uh, show you shortly. That's not on any of the other mixers, is no, it? No, brand new for CQ. All right, so this is the best one, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, so the next thing I'd say for your setup, you, you've set up your outputs, mm -hmm. um, uh, you've got your delay set, so everything's delayed to whatever it is, 600, I think the max is 685 milliseconds. We'll just put it really, really late. Yeah, let's go up. Just to ruin the really, it's a really low latency device, right? It's 682 so just, milliseconds. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, so don't do that. Uh, and then go to the processing <laughs> section where you'll see the, whatever you've selected in the config will carry across. And as you go through these screens, you'll notice you can select any of these channels, jump back to the config and it will select that input as well. So it follows you as you go through. Oh, okay. So if you need to go back and tweak something, you can select it in the processing screen, go back to config or jump, jump between all of them and just kind of follow. And I have three magical lights now. Ah, yes. So now with the smart rotaries, you've got gain, which you had before mm -hmm. on the top. Which was right, so it, it yeah, matches. So it matches. Uh, and then you've got pan and you've got level as well. So that's level, that's your kind of output to your left, right mix. Okay, so purple is pan and that's my fader. Oh, green green dot for the fader. Yeah. yeah. So you can select the, the input channels there and it will, will follow you around. So you can just keep your hand on those controls if you want. Okay, to so I'm, I'm using it like this. So yeah. pick and pick and twist. <laughs> Absolutely. So you'll see at the top as well, another thing in, in this screen, you've got the inputs one to eight. And okay. then you've got inputs nine to 16, stereo inputs and effects, and then your outputs. There's four tabs at the top there that allow you okay. to navigate. And USB and Bluetooth are on their own inputs. Yep, with full processing as well. So, oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah, parametric EQ. Yep. Wow. Yes, yeah, so that's really handy. And then the, the Bluetooth playback that you mentioned there as well. Um, so that's really, really handy for, uh, you know, just hooking up your phone, hooking up a device, playback from a computer. Anything yeah, like that. that's great. Yep. All right. Um, all right, so I'd go over to my input processing. And let's see, I'm going to dig in here. All right, so I can still change my sources over here if I if I want to between analog and or you know I'll call it digital for USB or SD. Mm -hmm. I got my gain assist. So this is basically the configuration screen, just in a different th yeah. this particular thing at least. Yeah, sure. And I have a high pass filter now. Yeah. Okay, uh, I'll turn that on. Why not? So every every one of the input channels has got um, the processing that you'll find on the larger consoles as well. So you've got uh, your gain and your high pass filter that you've pointed out. You've mm -hmm. got a gate on every input. You've got PEQ and you've got compressor on every input as well. Okay. And they're pretty much in the same order that you find them in on all your other boards. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So right. signal flow top to bottom. Okay. And then at the bottom of the strip, you'll see the send screen. So that send screen allows you for that particular uh, input to choose what's going to which output. Uh, what effects you're using with that input, your main main level. So you get kind of an overview of just that input. Would you say that, maybe I'm getting a little into the weeds here, <laughs> um, as far as like, you know, you're doing doing your monitor mix or you're, you're doing your bandmates monitor mix, is this the spot to do that in? Or is there a better spot for that? Well, the way we've kind of, uh, the way this is laid out is that the processing screen is on a channel by channel basis. Okay. And then you've got the fader screen. So the fader screen is all about multiple things to one output 
or to one effects unit. So that's okay. probably where you'd set up a single monitor, but it depends what you're doing. I mean, if you're doing a sound check, maybe, uh, maybe the guitarist, the bassist is still messing around, but the drummer's already done. Mm-hmm. Um, but you could still be saying it quickly by shouting at people, okay, the kick, the kick's here. Oh, I'm yeah. Okay, so this is like, if it, you're on this screen, it's like, who wants kick, kick exactly, in their wedge? Exactly, okay. exactly. Okay. And then you could just turn it out from there, and, and you're done. Oh, so this is like the sense to all button on the SQ. On yeah. the SQ. Exactly that. Okay, cool. Um, that looks like it's a really easy channel strip. <laughs> it gets easier. It gets easier. Yeah, it gets even easier. So um, what we've got in CQ, again, new for CQ, mm-hmm. is quick channels. Uh, so you can recall these from the config screen. We saw that library button earlier. But as we're in this screen now, we'll do it from here. Um, in the config screen, it'll recall preamp and uh, name and color as well. Mm-hmm. From this screen, it'll recall the processing. So at the top right of a number of screens, actually, is the, the library button. So is that obviously... this little folder icon? Yep. So if you tap on that, you'll get some options. And you'll see there's a couple of tabs at the top, so quick or complete. So if you look through the uh, quick yeah, inputs... Yeah. You could, I mean, what were we talking about? Drums. What What did you plug in in your imagination? It's, it's a kick drum. It's, a, it's, it's always it? a kick drum. Right? <laughs> okay, so the channel one is always the kick drum. So we'll select the uh, drums and percussion quick channel. Okay, and recall. Hit recall, and you'll see there's a little icon of a drum kit there. Nice. So if you touch on that, you'll get your Ooh. quick channel pop up. Yeah. So this is really cool. This is this is a, uh, as I say, brand new for CQ and. What we really wanted to do was make something that's uh, accessible and quick, that's for technical and non-technical users. Mm -hmm. Uh, So the quick channels are adjusting all of those parameters. So you still get the same processing. Um, You still get that that same 96K Allen Heath processing in the back end. It's just much quicker to control. Uh, Now, are are these derived, like I'm, I'm looking at my big giant knob in in the center and I'm, you know, it looks like it's changing the EQ. Are, are these based on any one particular like genre or mic? Like, is this? No. So what you'll get is a, this continuous control that mm-hmm. you can uh, move between different types of sound. Mm-hmm. So we've made it so it kind of makes sense. And I should say a lot of these work in a in a tonal way. So it makes sense if you if you only knew what a tone control was, they'd still kind of make sense. Okay. And so, but they're not like optimized like. Um, like for, for different all, microphones, or yeah. yeah. So like, I can plug in like a D6 or a Beta 52, and it'll all still make sense. Like, still talking about like kick mics. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you can you can just kind of tweak this, and the whole idea is, and the whole ethos is just turn it until it sounds better. <laughs> so like, does that sound better? No, it sounds worse. Okay, yeah. Turn it. Oh, does that sound better? Yeah, that sounds great. Done. Yeah. I mean, I do like that it's continuous, and it's not just like you know five clicks. Like yep. I have the my five different options here. That that's cool. And that's adjusting loads of parameters in the back end. So we worked with uh, pro engineers to set these up. We took loads and loads of uh, data Mm -hmm. uh, and lots of fixed presets, and we kind of funneled them all down into these quick channels. There's a kick attack, and then there's a a snare attack. Are those like optimized to like glue glue together or? Yeah, so those are worked together. So if you had your, uh, you'd have your drums and percussion quick channel on, let's say you got kick snare set up on one and two. Mm-hmm. So you could have this quick channel set up on, on both of those, or on each of those, uh, and you could set the attack on both of them, and it would sound great. If you want to really attack, you know, really, really <laughs> I'm in attacking. a metal band, all right? Okay, cool, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> At least in my, in, in my head right now, I'm in a metal band, because I picked attack twice. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, like, you wouldn't have an issue, like, like that, that's not designed to, like, glue together, like, EQI. So, like, if I wanted to pick, like, warm kick and attack snare, like I'm not going to run into like any weird issues. No, no, they're, they're not, it's not going to boost the same frequency. So all of these are instrument centric, so they're, they're based on the source. They're not doing the same thing for every selection that you make here. Okay. Um, so that as you select kick, snare, tom, these are optimized for a thing. Of course you can, you know, you can go wild. I might put uh, overhead on my kick. Um, you can you can do that if you want, but you know it's it's very very easy to work with, very simply laid out. Um, awesome. If you want to do something straightforward, I, and I do see on the bottom down here, um, gate and compressor, mm-hmm. uh, and they're just one button on and off. Like, how is are they set to like the magical settings everybody uses? Is it like the four to one thirty yeah. like? <laughs> Yeah, it's, again, it's different for each of the uh, for each of the selections that you make here from kicks. Okay, so that's not just like instruments. generic. It's not compressor. a generic thing. No, okay. these are, these are all set up uh, per quick channel. 
Awesome. Um, awesome. So another thing I want to show you with the quick channels, actually, if we let's uh, let's use our imagination again, and um, this time we're going to do something which is a bit more of the let's say money channels. Uh, okay. We don't want to give people too much of an ego, but <laughs> you know, with 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 bass and guitar and and vocal, maybe you want to get a little bit more control. Mm -hmm. So if we select. Um, Where's your bass going? I'm going to put my bass on eight. Why not? Uh, so if we select the bass quick channel, so this one works in a slightly different way. Uh, so you've still got a, a big control there to select through, so you can have uh, funk or, or jazz or clean. Um, and now you've got a, a sub, mid, and detail control. So this is more like you would find on a bass or guitar amp. So it's still very easy to work with. Mm -hmm. um, an important thing to point out here is that those uh, settings at 12 o'clock that's not flat. Yeah. So you could select the funk setting and you could leave those at 12 o'clock and it will be a different sound to if you selected the jazz setting and set them at 12 o'clock. Okay, that's that's good to know. Um, and I guess we're, while we're on the subject of bass, are these optimized for like the DI out on a bass head? Are they optimized for like a mic'd up bass cab plugging direct into one of these have? Yeah, yeah. So on, uh, yeah, on, on 15 and 16, on the 20B, you have a, a high impedance option. So you could plug a bass or acoustic guitar, or whatever, straight in. Mm -hmm. um, and this is in the stage box format, of course. So it's, it's on stage. So the, yeah, so that's right exclusive in. to the to the to CQ20. The 20. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, but the, you know what's going on here under the hood doesn't. It's accounting for all three scenarios. So it doesn't. Yeah, it it would work fine with uh, with a mic up cab or if you're using it with with di of course with uh if i select in fact this, this is a good one so let's uh let's change that and let's select the guitar option for the quick channel okay so now that, now we've got clean we've got steel rhythm lead uh one of those is nylon mm -hmm. and you see it changes the icon actually for that oh, one yeah. as well. uh so that would be great for plugging in a kind of classical guitar um yeah or the steel for a for a steel acoustic Nice. And again, this time you've got low, mid, high, and you can kind of cut or boost at those frequencies. There's actually some other stuff going on under the hood, which is which is really interesting. Um, but it's all different for every single preset. But the whole idea is that if I want more high, maybe it's boosting at one frequency and cutting at another frequency. <laughs> it's kind of doing doing all sorts of stuff under the hood. Um, but again, the whole the whole idea here is just to make it really quick and really easy to dial stuff in, if so you're experienced or not. So if I go in, and this is regardless of if it's guitar, or bass, kick drum, or whatever, if I just go in and I select like guitar lead and I leave all these knobs dead center, mm -hmm. it sounds good. Yep, exactly. Assuming I mic mic'd it correctly. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, assuming the, the microphone's <laughs> pointing in the right direction and that kind of thing. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> and you can do that across all the channels on yep. here. So any of the uh, channels on CQ can be quick, and you could have a, you could have a mix. So maybe you've got some of them are quick. Uh, this is this will sound really bad for you know if you've got drummers listening, but sometimes with toms, I might not spend as much time on them as I spend on the kick and snare. So maybe I might use a, a, a quick channel for my toms just to dial it in quickly and then concentrate some more on, on other things. That makes sense. But uh, a cool feature is if I later on, so that's my setup, if later on I wanted to have everything complete, I could do that as well. So you can convert these from quick to complete. Okay, so like I want to dial in like the, the gate threshold or something like that. I would start with this and then convert it to a complete channel. Yeah, so let's let's do it on uh, on one of the settings we've got and we can see that it's not flat. So that guitar with the, with the lead option mm -hmm. and all my settings are at 12 o'clock. There's a little drop down box next to the library button. This is the three lines with the arrow pointing yeah, down. Yeah, the little uh, hamburger, I think they refer to. Everybody calls it a hamburger. Yeah. Okay, so they convert. So right. now you can see convert, hit convert. Apply. You're going to convert this, apply. And now you've got the, the full channel there. That is not flat. <laughs> it's definitely not flat if you go and look at the EQ. It's cool, right? Yeah, RTA on and off too. Nice. Yeah, you've got an RTA on the PQ and the GQ. And also the feedback assistant. We've looked at the the kind of input processing. Mm -hmm. So if we jump across to the outputs, it's a, it looks similar. You've got everything running top to bottom in, in uh, signal order. Um, so depending on what you've got set, I see you've got some on GQ and some PQ FBA. Yeah, so I'm going to pull that up. So let's pull up the feedback assistant. So this is available on every output simultaneously. 
or any output wow. that's been set to, to, to FBA PQ. And this works by listening to the, the signal, sensing feedback, and just applying notch filters mm -hmm. to, to remove it. But it's doing some really clever stuff and works super quickly. So there's 16, or well, up to 16 filters available on every output. So it's not like a pool so of 16. So I, I do that under adjust? You can do it. You don't have to go to the adjust. So if you're just using this for like, uh, I just want to get rid of feedback. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to get too in depth with any of this. I just want to detect feedback and get rid of it. Mm -hmm. That's all I need. Um, you can just stay on this page. You can uh, make sure that the, the hold is, is off on detect. So now it's, that's so you can pause it at any time. Okay. Uh, and then you've got a mode which is fixed or live. So that, that changes what kind of filters you apply. So for a setup uh, scenario, you know, you're, you're in a, a club or bar mm -hmm. and you've got your monitors set up and you, and you just want to ring everything out. Okay. That's your kind of uh, ring out there. So you could put it on fixed and apply those filters and they'll stay there until you reset the whole feedback system or you reset them individually. The live applies uh, filters that will get removed. So they'll, they'll kind of, they'll lift, I think is the term. It sucks them out. It kind of sucks them back out again. So, <laughs> so it will apply those filters. It will get rid of the feedback when it happens. Um, but you might not want that filter there forever. It might just be that the singer walked in front of the PA and now they've gone back on stage. So you can have this, um, this kind of live recovery. So the recovery can be fast or it can be off if you want. So do you need like an RTA mic? Like how, how does it know? <laughs> it's just listening to, to all of the outputs. So um, for each of the monitors, you could mm -hmm. have, if you've got wedges on stage, each of those can has its own uh, feedback system. So if it senses uh, feedback on that monitor, it applies filters. Wow. Um, so yeah, that's really cool, really handy. Um, and you can you can use this in lots of different ways. You can be quite clever with it. So you could leave it in live mode, but mm -hmm. if you get a repeated feedback happening, because it will apply the filter, it will recover. You hear a small amount of feedback, it applies the filter again. Yeah. Um, so you, is you it like fixed to fit? You could switch to fixed. Is it going where like if you know the frequency goes above a certain threshold? Is it looking at it in re relation to the volume or RMS, however you guys doing it in relation to the other frequencies? Like how, well, it, what's, what's the math going on here? So it's looking at, so feedback is really a, uh, a repeated frequency. So it's looking at the, the repetition of those frequencies and it would need to be a certain threshold to be kind of classed by the feedback assistant uh, as feedback. Mm -hmm. So if it was really buried in the mix and there's lots of other stuff going on and there's a tiny bit of feedback, it might not pick it up. So that's why it's good to do this at setup time. That's the that's the time when the feedback assistant is happiest, mm -hmm. um, because there's nothing else going on. And you can you can just set it up uh, and apply those fixed filters. But even in a, a live mode, as soon as you hear the feedback, the feedback assistant is hearing the feedback as well. So it'll start to <laughs> start to get rid of those uh, okay those feedback frequencies. And you said filters plural. Mm -hmm. So how how many? Yeah, so there's 16 for each feedback system. So you could have, um, you've got the main left, right, and then you've got the six independent outputs. Mm -hmm. So you've kind of got seven, if you like. I mean, they are, there's, there's kind of two going on on the main left, right. But uh, if you go to the adjust screen there, you'll be able to see these 16, oh, yeah, 16. filters. Mm -hmm. So 12 of these, or up to 12 of these, can be used for fixed. Mm -hmm. uh, and all of them could be used for live. So you could have 16 live filters, for example, or you could have 12 fixed and four live oh um, so any of them can be any type uh, and then if you if you really want to get into it i mean like you can you can get kind of tweaky with this you can <laughs> uh you, you can jump in and select each of those filters individually you can adjust its width you can adjust how much it's cutting by you could reset it you can see what frequency it's being applied at um, okay so i'm not locked into whatever the computer inside here decides is yeah, I mean, uh, so a so good point for this uh, is, let's say you've got a flute player, a <laughs> flautist, right? Because flute's basically a sine wave with a bit of white noise at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you just played that through, it would sound like feedback. It sounds exactly the same as feedback. So it, w it would apply. So it hates flute player. It hates 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 flautists. Yeah. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> But um, but that's where that's where the kind of live recovery thing comes in, or maybe you know it's applied uh, a feedback filter, and you want to keep most of the filters, but you just want to get rid of one. So you can get into this screen, and you can just get rid of that one. You can select them at the top in the graph, uh, or you can select them um, at the bottom.
just by number because you can see when they, they've popped up. You can see the kind of see them as they're applied basically from the screen. Uh, the other part of this screen is the all filters, so you can affect all of them. You could cut all of them. Oh, okay, so yeah, or change the width of all of so them. So it's not the all screen. pass filters. It's actually grabbing all the filters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and the 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 clever stuff that it's doing as well is uh, looking after those frequencies. So if it sees, it doesn't just apply this filter here and that's it. Mm -hmm. It applies a filter. If it's still detecting feedback, it'll apply a deeper cut on that filter. If it senses a frequency adjacent to uh, to that that first filter, it it does some clever math and background. But it's working out um, whether or not it should just widen that filter. Maybe it'd be better to widen that filter and use okay, one so filter. Okay, so so when it is like you have it in live mode and it's mm -hmm. and it's notching, it's not just like doing one really thin slice. It's doing the math of like should I. Go up and down, and should I yeah. open and so it's, close? So, so it should only apply, and the, and the whole purpose of that is that we don't want to destroy the signal. I mean, we get rid of feedback by muting the output, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so you don't want to get that's the extreme, but you don't want to get to that sense. You you want it to still sound as good as it can possibly sound, even though you're applying some some notch filters. It also applies them really narrow filters to start with. Um, you can reduce the width of those filters to some insane like. <laughs> super yeah ridiculous amount um, so yeah so it's a very clever uh, feature that we've added for CQ brand new for CQ and we're very very proud of it um, okay so that that's the feedback assistant mm. okay so you, you've mentioned we've talked about two assistants and mm -hmm. I, I heard the number three before so the three assistants mm -hmm. yeah so the third assistant is the effects assist okay so if you go to the effects page mm -hmm. You'll get uh, on the 18T and the 20B, you've got four effects units, which are multi effects units. So you can use reverbs, delays, modulation on, on any of those. Uh, the reverbs and the delays have this effects assist option. So what this is doing is in the background, it's adjusting multiple parameters. It's changing things based on the input signal. Mm -hmm. uh, so fre it's frequency, responsive. Okay, so there's like EQ. It's responsive. not just like I'm changing my trail time or something like that. Yeah. So it's, it's, changing, it's changing things dynamically. Uh, so if we load up an easy verb, Older. yeah. So jump into the library, load up an easy verb there. Okay. So these are this is a, a an instrument centric or source centric reverb. So you've got a reverb size control, and then you've got a type. So if we select a type, pick whatever you like. Hmm. String slap. There. String slap. <laughs> okay. <with> string slap. <laughs> So on string slap, the the reverb size and the settings um, the settings in the easy verb are now like optimized for string, uh, and the this? effects assist is soften. So you what can just that? switch that on and off. So that's going to soften the reverb sound. So it's not going to sound too squawky like it might do on a. So is it like turning down the mix? Like is it e changing it, the EQ? It's like... changing just the just the reverb, and uh, what it's doing is is. Uh, cleaning up a lot of the time it's cleaning up it does different things for different settings so if we choose another one so uh, let's choose vocal intimate we now have a whisper option so it does different things depending on what the setting okay. is um, but it's optimized for that type okay this is cool too you have a trails on I'm assuming it's for, for delays not <laughs> Or yeah, for reverbs work. as well. Yeah, that would yeah, work yeah. for reverb. Yeah, so the trails on and off, the mute mode. So you can mute any of these uh, verbs. So say like between... Between songs. Between songs, right? So you, you're going to mute stuff. Um, so you can either mute uh, and leave the trails on. So mm -hmm. as you mute, you still get a natural trail out. Or you can switch those off. And when you mute, it's a dead mute. And I know different people like to work different ways. So. Okay. Uh, so I'm poking through the effects and mm -hmm. I see this thing called echo verb. Is that reverb and delay? Or de delay and reverb is a better way to put exactly that. that. It's actually three three things going on here. So oh, cool. you've got uh, an echo. <clears throat> so you've got an echo. Um, you've got a, a reverb with a, a color and size control, and then you've got a tap delay built in as well. So this is this is really cool because it's like instead of using up those effect slots, you can have everything in one. So I know a lot of people ask, "What's the best effect <laughs> setting for vocals?" I mean, I would just shove this on vocals basically so th this is my house of worship preset essentially is what you're talking about yeah so you can you can uh choose your echo time um the echo level so you can turn it off if you wanted to okay. uh and then you just tweak the size of the verb 
and uh, put in your delay time or tap in your delay time. So on easy verb, we had one effects assist. I see four. <laughs> yeah, so you've got four options on this one. So this one doesn't have the, the type setting like you had on uh, easy verb. So mm -hmm. this one has uh, these four different options. So you can look at level, whisper, uh, clarity, or soften on the echo verb. Okay, so, you're, okay, so you're, you're picking one. You're not turning each of those, those yeah. on and off. Yeah, okay. so you just pick the setting that you want in this uh, in Echo Verb. Okay. Um, the other reverb to point out, actually, while we're we're looking at the verbs and stuff, is the space verb. I don't know if you've got one of those up, or uh, if you want to recall one from the library. Yeah, let's recall it. So this is this works in a slightly different way to the easy verb. It looks very similar, um, but this time you're picking a space. So where the easy verb was based on the source uh, of what you're using it for, this is about putting uh, instruments or voices or whatever into a specific space. So you can choose your space. I'm going to go with cathedral. Uh, and then you can choose your decay time and then you've got effects assist as well. Oh, cool. So they're all really nice and quick and easy to use and you kind of can't go wrong. Are, are these based on any kind of like classic rack units or like are these just like Allen and Heath, like super awesome algorithms? Like what? Yeah, so we've been uh, we've been doing this for a while. Um, uh, so we've got a huge back catalog of, of effects, um, and we've pretty much pulled everything that we had apart. And so mm -hmm. there is some there is some reuse of algorithms, um, but really we pulled everything we had apart and put it all back together, uh, <laughs> and and changed some of it, tweaked some of it. So this is like. Yeah, you, you, lots of different things. It's an evolution of our effects, really. I think the double tracker on here. Yeah, so there's uh, in the in the modulators you've got phaser, a double tracker, mm -hmm. uh, you've got a flanger and a chorus as well. Um, so these are obviously using up one of those effects units. And at the bottom you'll see there's an effects unit mode. So oh, with, yeah, shared. The, yep. yep. So shared or inserted. So with um, with some of these, you might want to use them in a shared mode. So classic, like for for delays and reverbs, often you want to um, use them across multiple channels at the same time to tie everything together and tie the mix together. Yeah, put everything in the same space like you would yeah. with like a reverb, which uh, would be like a normal like effects send on a typical mixer. Yeah, absolutely. And then with the insert option, you can put it just on a specific channel. So you switch over to insert, it gives you the option of the channel, uh, and then you just tap in and you'll be able to... So it'll change to give you a mix option now because you're mixing the dry and the wet signal, so the effective signal and the dry signal. Mm -hmm. um, and also if we jump across, um, if you just note which, which channel you put that on. On four. I okay. Why and, then, not? and then if you jump back to your processing screen, you'll oh, see double tracker. it tells you where it is in the chain. And if you tap on that, it will <laughs> jump you back to the effects. Wow. And it yep. actually switched over here to you, so I'm, I'm out of processing. I'm back. Yep, so back. now you're dealing with effects again. Okay. And if you jump back to processing, it will still be the selected channel. All right. Uh, so we've kind of gone from here to here. Mm -hmm. Let's see what's on home. So recording. <laughs> yep. So there's built-in recording options in CQ. Uh, you can record stereo or playback stereo using a USB key or, or drive with the USB-A connection. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the other option you'll see there is multi-track. So if you go on to the multi-track option, that's for the SD card. Mm -hmm. So you can fit in an SD card uh, and you can record all the channels individually. Um, and you can select and arm which ones you want to record. So you don't have to record everything if you don't want to, or you could record everything. Um, so it's up to 16 channels and 96K. Or you can record all of the channels if you're on 48. I can multi-track over yep, USB. Over USB -P. Yep, at the same time as well. Oh. Yeah. So you could, if, you, if you're doing uh, an important recording, for example, um, you might be recording to your DAW and mm -hmm. you might be working in a project, but at the same time, you could set up your SD card just to be recording as a backup. That uh, is awesome. Just to have that <laughs> fail safe, you, like you, you never know. There's a, a couple of things as well with the... Um, uh, with the multi-track recording. So if we jump back to the config screen. Is this why I see 24 and I only see 16 inputs? Is that where we're going with this? Yeah, exactly that. So if you jump back to the, the config screen, there's an option at the top for your USB, SD, and Bluetooth settings in the middle uh, there. Okay. So with USB, SD connected, mm -hmm. you can pick your source point. So that's your record point. So you okay, can, so this is just like on an SQ. Like I call this like the tap point, essentially. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you can record everything completely clean if you wanted to. 
mm-hmm. uh, and then you could do everything with your, your mixing later. Um, uh, you could you could do that if you want to record for virtual soundtrack as well. You'd pick the post preamp option so yeah. that you're not processing it twice. Makes sense. Uh, or you could record with all the processing on. So say you've absolutely nailed your mix, but mm-hmm. you just want to record things individually so you can you know, mute and change levels later. You could record post compressor or even post AMM. Okay, and, and I noticed that there's like the channel assignment over here. So 17 and 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So that's where you're getting past this. Yeah, so there's some uh, some mapping available so uh, or patching for the outputs. So you've got the all of the inputs are available at all times, so you can record all of those input channels. Mm-hmm. But then the last ones you can pick, uh, you could choose to record a stereo mix, for example, uh, or you could record the stereo channel, or you could record um, an effect. Uh, and then the last one of those as well is the stereo um, LR mix. So that's that's selecting what you're going to record if you record to USB A, or if you're set up uh, in the stream mode for stereo as well. Okay. So that's that's a really interesting point actually. Um, we've we've got it set up so that the USB B connection can either be stereo or multi track. That is actually really great. And I was just about to ask you about that mm-hmm. because I I maybe they've changed this, but I know with OBS it's always looking for the first two channels on a USB interface. Yep. That is exactly it. So there's a couple of uh, places where that's really, really useful. Mm-hmm. Um, OBS is a good one, or you know, some software. Oh, for yeah, example, Teams or we'll Zoom just, too we'll just look would at be great for that. Those two, two first channels. And that means that you can set up your channels to be main left, right, um, or one of the other mixes if you want to do a separate stream mix. Mm-hmm. The, the other place where it's really useful is if you want to hook up. So this is a class compliant device. So you can use, um, you can use like a connection kit. Uh, or you can connect up uh, to your iPad or tablet or phone. So say you were doing a stream, for example, and you just want to do a, uh, let's say you're in a band and you want to mm-hmm. stream your rehearsal yeah, straight from your phone to Facebook or something or Instagram or TikTok or whatever. You can uh, plug this in and connect this up to your device, mm-hmm. put it in stereo mode, and it will work in place of the built-in microphone. So you've got high-quality audio going through. Okay, and I, I do see too that it is selectable so that I could make it like, you know, out one and two if I was, you know, running a PA and wanted to stream it at the same time. So I'm not locked in. Yeah. So you could set up in that situation. I mean, this is getting a, a bit more pro as well, actually. But mm-hmm. you could have some uh, ambient mic set up that you're only sending to that mix, but you're not sending to the, the main left, right. So yeah. you could have all of your... Uh, your mix going on with all the instruments on the stage, but you could also have a, a pair of ambient mics set up mm-hmm. for the stream. I, I mean, this is, I mean, speaking of the word pro, this mm-hmm. is like a very easy, very, like everything that you've explained makes like total sense, mm-hmm. like whether you're a beginner or not. Um, why would somebody that's like, a pro that could, you know, take out their SQ6. Like, you know, why why might they want to grab one of these for like a certain gig or just have it as like a backup mixer or something like that? What a, a lot of it, I'd say, is to do with um, uh, convenience uh, and also you're you're getting Allen Heath processing. Mm-hmm. You've got a 96k mixer with a, with Allen Heath processing in the the input channels here. So you've got super low latency. You've got a bunch of recording options. Um, the 20B and the 18T have built-in Wi-Fi. So, for example, if you just want to go out and do a, a small gig, you could take out the 20B, sit on the stage, connect everything up, uh, connect up your, your tablet, and away you go. Yeah. So it's it's very much a convenience thing. The, the other thing which you can see in the screen we're currently in is the uh, Bluetooth connection. So all of the units, the, the 12T, the 18T, and the 20B, have a Bluetooth connection, which, again, really convenient. Um, you know, phone, phones don't have... <laughs> yeah, like, yeah you don't even need to so. bother with like an eighth inch input on here anymore. No, there's, there's no cable. You can you can leave your phone in your pocket um, <laughs> and just you know, play back whatever you're playing back. So yeah, a lot of this is about convenience and speed, but it's still kind of top quality. So it's still Allen Heath quality in mm-hmm. terms of the the build. These are all like metal chassis die cast yeah, these, sides these this are all like solid this does not feel like a toy like no. this is like I could no, no. I could hurt somebody with yes. this if I wanted it's to like a... bludgeon them <laughs> it's a... I'm not going to okay, okay. <laughs> yeah I'm scared now uh, <laughs> but yeah it's, it's, a, it's a very solid mixer the, the other thing is these are 
for those channel counts in an AV corporate situation, mm -hmm. for example, you might uh, want to use a, a CQ to put it into your AV rack. Yeah. Um, so they're all rack mountable. You could you could stick any of them in a rack. You could have them in an install space, um, and they've all got AMM built in as well. I mean, that's that's a great thing to have. I mean, yeah, pro feature, but like you know, everybody everybody's a podcaster now apparently. <laughs> That's true. So, so the uh, the AMM is like. I'll be honest. I'm a I'm a lazy engineer. If I if I can if I can, you know, set things up. If I can do a set and forget, mm -hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. So, uh, where AMM is brilliant is it works much faster than you or I ever could, mm -hmm. or anyone really. Yeah. It's it's a, a gain sharing algorithm that that just looks at the signal on all of the inputs and it just applies gain to where someone's speaking. You can change the, you can tweak the settings so somebody might be more important. You can push the fader up on, on that channel, for yeah. example. But once you've said it, you're done. So if you're doing a recording, you're doing a podcast, you're doing broadcast situation, you've got talking heads, you know, you've got a bunch of gooseneck mics on stage, you've got a meeting, a yeah. uh, conference, all of that kind of thing. Uh, you can just plug in the AMM, switch it on, on all the channels. That's available on every mic input. Yeah. Um, I know on the, um the Avantis and the D Live, you have the option of what is it, D Classic and, and NOM or NOM. Mm -hmm. um, is this one of those? Because I don't see the option to select. Yeah, so this is the, the D Classic. D so this okay. is, yeah, this is the same as the D Classic that you'll find in uh, everything from Q, SQ, Avantis, D Live. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Thanks for watching JBA University. Yeah.